Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our Crazy Dealer and Great Engine Game series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and as you can see from the board, <coughs> pardon me, we are taking a look at another Queen Odds game and this was one in which Leela's 2300 Lee Chess rated opponent came so close to winning the game but just fell short just at the last moment. But yeah, pretty interesting really to see how you know the game went, and it's it's quite typical really. Um, what you do see in actual fact is that you know very often, pretty much until the end of the game, um, there's a lot of um, human players who are actually you know winning uh, still. But uh, somehow it's the uh, I guess it's the weight of tricks and the weight of finding uh, you know uh, spotting all the um, uh, the annoying things that Leela's putting uh, in front of them and also the time pressure as well that kind of gets to uh, to players in the end. But uh, yeah, this was a really good effort and uh, Black came really really close. So e3 d5 d3 d takes c4 d takes c4 Leela doesn't need to worry about the exchange of queens of course not having one at all e5 knight c3 knight f6 bishop d2 bishop b4 knight e2 <coughs> pardon me just uh making sure that uh, you can recapture with a uh a knight on c3 to protect e4 castles castles queen side and uh yeah Leela is very very often just uh castling queen side with the um uh, with the queen odds. So um, queen e7 and then f3 just to defend e4. Oh, sorry, bishop g5 first, uh, sorry. And then after c6, stopping uh, the knight coming into d5, then f3. Bishop b6, g4. So, I mean, Leela playing a pretty typical attacking structure, just <coughs> with a small detail that the, uh, the queen is missing. Black plays quite sensibly, h6. Yeah, I mean, it's um, it's possible. I mean, normally I wouldn't um, necessarily play a move like h6 when white's gone g4 because g5 will open up the king side. On the other hand, you know, considering that um, uh, that, yeah, you know, white's firepower is uh, is much, much smaller. It's not um, really a bad idea to uh, to do that. Bishop h4, rook d8, rook e1 and knight bd7. Yeah, I, m I might actually have been kind of tempted uh, even to play a move like um, uh, queen c5 I suppose really um, because I'm, I mean you're not really worried about bishop f6 gf6 because uh, you know there's quite a lot of pressure <laughs> on the um, on the uh, on white's queen side there and uh, you know the dark squares are all a little bit sensitive so you're not really going to have uh, you know time to bring a knight g3 to f5 for example and uh, yeah I mean even then you know the black king side is hardly um, is hardly weak there so yeah I mean um, knight bd7 is fine but you know maybe not uh, completely necessary um, g5 played by uh, white and um, yeah I mean I think black here could have just played the move knight h7 just uh, exploiting the uh, the pin um, I mean you know you're going to take a pawn of course Leela's seen this right and uh, Leela's just thinking okay well you'll take that pawn and then I'll I'll either get the g file open or if you take with the h pawn I'll go h4 and get the h file open but that seems quite uh, quite sensible as well. But w what uh, what Black did was uh, was completely reasonable. Nothing wrong with that. And just bringing the knight round to g6. G6 is a little bit funny, really. Um, I mean, you, I, I would have said, well, let's get the queen side uh, stuff going. You know, b5, something like that. Um, because after knight g6, white plays uh, h4. You know, which is uh, well. You know, you're going to get h5 with tempo somehow, you know, and uh, um, I just think that, you know, those are quite good things to to remember when you're playing normal chess afterwards, you know, that, uh, you know, to bring a knight on g6 where it's in the path of a, of a natural white attack is probably not the, uh, the best thing that you can do. But, you know, I mean, there's nothing uh, particularly wrong with it either. Black played queen c7, h5 and knight f4. And now Leela played h6. And here's something um, a little bit strange, maybe, from the uh, from the black player. Um, obviously got a bit nervous about what was happening on the king side. Um, I mean, I think if you're nervous, then um, you know, a move like knight h7 would be quite decent. Just, you know, just force white to, you know, to give up the dark squared bishop for, for a rook. Okay, you've lost the exchange. That's a little bit... Um, 
less good, but you've got rid of a major attacking piece there, really. So, you know, that, that should actually be uh, be quite helpful. What Black did was um, a bit more... Um, um, yeah, a bit more rigorous, really. He played the move G6, and after Bishop F6, King H7. So Black's just uh, lost a piece there, and also offering uh, White the exchange. But Leela doesn't uh, take the exchange, of course. Um, Leela's gonna has got an attacking bishop, so it's going to try and keep that bishop uh, there. But um, but yeah, I mean, in principle, um, uh, Black, of course, is still completely winning here. You know, it's uh, he's lost a piece, um, but um, king side is kind of safe now. And um, well, you know, obviously there's the whole queen side and uh, and Black's material advantage to go for. So Leela played takes takes, and then Bishop D3. Bishop b7, Bishop g7. So um, I'm sure if Bishop f8, Lila would have played Bishop f6. You know, I mean, uh, just uh, keeping the uh, uh, the bishop on. You might have been able to get a draw by repetition there. But OK, you know, you're a queen up. So uh, that's not too surprising. Um, what's quite interesting now is um, I think one of the, the big strengths of Lila as an, uh, as an odds player. And uh, it's something that you wouldn't really see with a human player, you know, which I think is what make Lila, makes Lila so dangerous at odds play. Is that actually, you know, White's attack has kind of run out of uh, steam. There's not very much that um, that White's going to do here. And Black starts uh, attacking. And what Leela with um, is able to do, simply because it's uh, uh, an engine, of course, and uh, it has that capability, is just to um, uh, is just to defend simply. You know, and the, 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 in principle, the, um, <coughs> the queen side does not look defensible somehow. But Leela manages to uh, to hang on like that and then wait for better days when, uh, yeah, with weaknesses that Black's created in coming forward, that Leela will be able to um, uh, to win somehow. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, human players would, would just not be able to do that somehow. And, uh, well, it's how Leela's, you know, causing all these problems for players because, you know, uh, this player was playing with uh, three minutes plus two seconds. You know, when it gets to the increment, uh, it's going to get really, really tough for uh, for uh, for Black to play accurately with all the tricks that Leela has got. I mean, uh, C5, the engines recommended something quite interesting, which was here and then Rook takes D3. <coughs> so just giving up that material somehow. C takes D3, Queen D2, just activate the Queen, Knight C1, Queen G2. And, uh, you know, again, White's quite a way away from um, uh, from being able to do anything. And, uh, of course, there's, you know, stuff like A5 uh, to A4 coming in, that sort of stuff. Again, that's just, you know, judiciously giving uh, material back. But uh, Black played C5 and Leela played the rather surprising Bishop B5. I mean, after all... You know, uh, you're opening up the queen side, but somehow White's surviving just about for now. But not very comfortably, <laughs> it must be said. Rook b4, knight c3, rook db8. Uh, interesting to see that the engines are also looking at rook g8, just trying to play rook takes g7 and just get rid of that danger and then, um, well, be able to bring the bishop onto the long diagonal. You know, just uh, but what Black is doing is actually, you know, very good. Leela's uh, really needing to um, uh, to uh, hang tight there. Maybe a slight inaccuracy here from uh, from Black now. Um, Queen a5 looks very, very promising, but um, does allow the, the white um, uh, bishop to uh, to get to c6, which, uh, you know, which is a, a little bit annoying. Not it's not winning or anything, but, you know, it's. Uh, it um, it is quite uh, um, a little bit irritating there to allow White to activate that piece. Um, yeah, I mean, quite a few um, interesting possibilities. One thing that um, was Stockfish did was he took twice on there and played the move Bishop F8. It's a little bit um, mysterious that one, but um, um, looking to um, uh, to get rid of um, of. Uh, yeah, of, of the bishop and then be able to play queen b4, take c3. It's all about wrecking the white position, basically, and uh, letting the queen find its um, find its power somehow. Black played the move f6, which looks quite reasonable, cutting off the bishop from the defense of the queen side. So now stuff like rook b2 is really dangerous. Leela plays knight d5, though. Takes and takes. And now c4 from um, from uh, uh, black. And there's a big threat in there. I don't know whether you want to stop the video and just work out what black's threat is. 
The big threat is to go queen takes a2. And after king a2, rook a4 is checkmate. And it's very hard for white to defend against this, of course, because uh, yeah, you can't move the rook out of the way because the b2 pawn is hanging. So <coughs> it kind of looks like curtains, uh, really. But um, leader plays b3. And now white had a re black had a really strong move here, which was uh, um, rook a4, which was quite nice. Um, the idea being that uh, obviously if b takes a4 then queen c3 we're threatening rook takes a2 check here and uh, if rook b2 then we go bishop a3 that would have been really really strong um, so um, yeah the best white's got is to take take uh, sorry got to, going to have to take with a king there rook a2 king c1 but okay you know we're uh, we're we're nearly there with uh, with black somehow C takes B3, Queen A3 check, whatever you want to do. Rook A1 check as well. You know, it's all, all just really good. So black really, really close, but played the move C3, which blocks stuff a little bit. But it's not bad. It's not bad. It's still fine. White played Bishop F7, which may have come as a little shock. Just uh, um, you're just going to line up and uh, play Bishop G6. All of a sudden, there's a little threat you need to, uh, to take care of. Um... Yeah, there are quite a few ways for um, for black to um, uh, to play here. Um, black chose uh, the move queen a3, which is um, not too bad. Absolutely not too bad. And uh, Leela played the move e5, just trying to free the um, the bishop. And here, unfortunately, I, I guess the, the black player was on increments by now. Um, here he really... Um, um, yeah, he, he missed his uh, his glorious chance. I mean, you could play, um, you know, a, a, a sort of a holding move like F5 or F or F take C5. That, that doesn't really matter. But um, the best move was to play Rook 8, B5 here. <coughs> um, and um, yeah, the idea is that you're coming around with Rook A5 or even better, Queen A2 and Rook A5. And um, so there's ab absolutely nothing you can do. Um, so, um, uh, that was just completely killing, you know, obviously rook g1, I've got queen b2 checkmate and, um, uh, and any other move like e takes f6, I've just got queen a2 and rook a5 checkmate. <coughs> now, what black did was play the move rook 8 b6, uh, just to hold the f6 pawn. And you might be saying, well, Matthew, you know, that's a holding move too. What could be wrong with that? Unfortunately, this runs into the uh, a huge trick of whites. Maybe you want to pause the video and see whether you can find it. The trick is bishop g8. Um, and here black resigned. Uh, the problem is, of course, that after king g8, h7 check. Um, king f7, h8 queen. Um, well, obviously... You know, white's uh, threatening to come in, rook h7, bishop f6, e6 check. And uh, yeah, black doesn't actually have any uh, any mating, uh, uh, immediately mate, mating response. For example, if you go rook, rook 6, b5, I'm going to play e6 here and then get a rook onto the e file. And, um, and you know, you, you're just going to be too exposed. <coughs> Unfortunately, the, the the slightly sad thing about it, though, is that um, in actual fact, in this position, black is still actually winning um, because uh, the position where, you know, essentially black resigned because um, black can play the move rook four b5. And it's a bit surprising in a way, but you, you are still threatening queen a2 takes and rook a5. And obviously the rook still can't move away because of queen b2. Um, so that is actually, you know, slightly surprising maybe, but th that is ab absolutely true. And the point of doing it like this is that after e6, you go rook takes e6. And yeah, I mean, the white's curiously unable to, to, to get quickly at the black king here. And, uh, you know, we're still threatening this queen a2 check and rook a5 or immediately rook a5 if white doesn't do anything amazing. So what is white going to do? Well, white does have the possibility of going b4 here <coughs> with the idea of, um, of uh, um, yeah, pushing away the queen with, um, with, uh, um, with rook b3 and also, you know, obviously stopping the rook from getting to a5. 
But there's one really nice idea here for uh, for Black. Um, don't know whether, yeah, maybe just pause the video as well and uh, have a look to see if you can spot it. It's um, Rook H5 in actual fact. And uh, the idea is that after Rook H5, we go Rook E1. Again, we're exploiting the fact that the uh, the white pieces are curiously unable to um, uh, to uh, to get at the Black King. The Black King's still safe. And then, well, whatever you do, the next move will be Queen B2 with uh, checkmate there. So actually, Black resigned in a still winning position uh, somehow. Um, I do have to say that um, you do notice that um, uh, this one's a, a little bit extreme somehow. But you do notice that um, you know black players are often um, uh, resigning in 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 you know they they've uh, got a queen uh, a queen odds and they lose a piece and then they resign somehow. Um, yeah, you know, um, I, I, yeah, probably you should just uh, just calm down a little bit and just think, hey, wait a bit, I'm still a queen up, I could still play for the win. I understand that you know players get frustrated and uh, sort of feel um, you know oh. Um, uh, I've played badly. I want to. I want to do it playing well, basically. But, um, but I think it is part of odds play that uh, you know accidents will happen. The um, the stronger player will find ways to uh, to stir things up. And you really, you know, the key skill that you're trying to prove is your ability to survive all that and still come out on top in the end. That's the most important thing. Not to play perfectly, you know, and uh, not allow any counterplay at all. Because against Leela, it's just never possible somehow. But uh, yeah, this was a little bit extreme because uh, yeah, Black still had a good way of um, of playing. Although you know, obviously on increments, it's uh, this is quite um, a hard move to uh, to spot somehow. A bit counterintuitive when you've uh, been going forwards to take um, a step back. But yeah, just that this thread along the A file is uh, very very strong. Whichever rook uh, delivers it. So there we are. Hope you enjoyed that game. Got lots more to come. So uh, give a like, subscribe and hope to see you at the next video. Thanks for watching.